Welcome, dear viewers, to a new episode of the Cultural Flavors Ramadan Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Mohammed Al Qattan, and I'm your co-host, Imam Arafi. Dear viewers, we'll be with you every day in Holy Month of Ramadan, so please don't miss any episode. Of course. So, Iman, usually you give us, you give me as well as you give our dear viewers an advice. So, what is your advice to our dear viewers today? Well, today my advice is please. Uh, since that today, like we started this uh, holy month with fasting, uh, maintain your health by doing a little bit of diet. And if you crave to eat sweets, make it less or at least eat healthy sweets. This is a really good advice from you, Iman, that please, dear viewers, try to eat in moderation. It's not going to hurt you if you eat sweet, but a little bit is enough. So, Iman, which could you be talking about today? Actually, today we have a very honorable guest from Kuwait. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he is a... So, we're going to talk about Kuwait? Yes. All right. He's from our country. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so, he is a traveler. Mm -hmm. he, he was an engineer before, actually. And then uh, he decided to travel the world and explore everything. So, I like this kind of episode because we're going to learn a lot from this kind of uh, guest because he traveled a lot. He gained a lot of information. He has a lot of perspective for other cultures. So we're gonna see what he's got, what he has. So dear viewers, let's go watch this report, which our amazing crew have made for us and we will be back. So please don't go away. A mechanical engineer worked at leading transportation company KGL as the technical manager, then in the oil sector KNPC refineries, started as engineer and moved up his career ladder, and last but not least, became an HR advisor at KPC for the managing director career development. After 20 years of serious technical work environment, he changed his lifestyle to motorcycle traveler around the globe to explore culture and people, creating friendships, and informing others about Kuwait, his homeland. The traveler Abdel Mahsin Al Baghli, Ibn Battuta of Kuwait, loves traveling and moving between countries. Wherever he was, he raised the name of Kuwait high. His name is well known among famous travelers. Despite the emergence of many young travelers, his name still has a glow among the people. He is a fierce adventurer who is not afraid of difficulties. He is defiant, brave, stubborn, and steel-headed. He does not give up or be defeated. And we're back, dear viewers, and I hope you enjoyed the report as much as we did. It's about, about our traveler, Abdel Mahsin Al Baghli. Welcome. Thank you, and uh, really appreciate uh, being me, hosting me as a guest in your uh, amazing uh, program. We are so happy to have you. I'm so excited to really learn and know more about your adventure. At the beginning, Mr. Abdel Mahsin, uh, how did like tell us first about yourself and like what for how long I mean did you discover this? Okay. Your passion. Yeah, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. Graduate 1988. Uh, I started my career as a technical manager for uh, a leading transportation company in Kuwait and in the Gulf. Then I moved to the oil sector. Um, KMBC, I start uh, my career there as a design engineer, then costing and planning engineer, contract engineer, then I become a head of the design office. Masha. Then from there, I, I, I get little up to, uh, to be a head of a maintenance uh, department. Then uh, finally, uh, I become advisor for a managing director in Kuwait Oil Cooperation. And after 25 years in the oil sector, I decide to close that chapter or con conclude that chapter and start another chapter of my life, which is traveling around the globe in a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. It is very interesting to travel around the globe by motorcycle. Such is, could, it could be risky to travel around the world by motorcycle. Uh, the word risky, which you 
Uh, put it. Uh, I mean, you you just put it around. You put you put in the line for that. Correct. Now I want to transfer this risky to the adventure. Mm -hmm. Life without adventure, it's like a food without uh, spices. Right. You wa you want to enjoy a food without spices. Exactly. The same thing. You want to enjoy a life without the adventure. Okay. So. You, you, do you start from Kuwait or do you start from other countries? Uh, always. Uh, for the last 10 years when uh, I started, I always start from home mm -hmm. and take the entire journey and back to Kuwait in the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult or like it was easy for that? And did you go alone or with someone? Yes. Uh, during the 10 years, I always travel alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it's, it's better, I mean, what I believe that if you are going to do an exam, mm -hmm. so usually you do the exam by yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. You don't want any help from, I mean, it's not allowed. Mm -hmm. So this journey, it has to be alone. So that's why I, I try to examine my ability. I try to examine my limitation alone. So Mr. Abdel Mahsin, we when you have a trip, yeah. Do you do a homework? I say, okay, I'm going to go from here to here. I'm going to drive, for example, six hours. Then I'm going to stay for a night. Or you just let it go. Spontaneously. Yeah. How do you, how do you manage that? Y yeah. Since you're, 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 you're traveling solo, so. Yes. Uh, overdoing things. Mm -hmm. uh, spoiling the test. Mm -hmm. So I just put a target. Okay. Uh, that my target to go from Kuwait to to that to that point okay. for for example the first long trip it was from kuwait i just want to reach the atlantic ocean okay. now it is a, a, a long route and it, it had there are so many options mm -hmm. i didn't waste my time and effort and resources in doing a lot of uh, uh, research mm -hmm. but i i just I know that I need some kind of the formality, like mm -hmm. a visas or whatever the Correct. combination. So I secure that and I let it go by itself. By itself. So uh, since I, I don't have a, a, a hotel uh, reservation or mm -hmm. airline reservation, so it's at open. Uh, mainly, I, I want to enjoy the the life outside Kuwait, mm -hmm. outside my comfort zone, okay. and enjoying the culture, enjoying the the tradition, the food, enjoying the scenery. Exactly. So if I kept uh, my there is a time frame, I'll be concentrating in the time frame. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to concentrate in the scenery. Okay. So I, I just leave it open. It is a very interesting Iman. Yes. When you retire, you have such a happy that you go and enjoy life and explore to other cultures. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I believe by traveling a lot, exposing to a lot of cultures, it gain you a lot of values. Thank God, yes, I really. If, if, if I want to, if I compare Adel Mahsin now mm -hmm. and Adel Mahsin exactly 2013, yes. there are tremendous changes. It is, it is, Definitely, there's a lot. I gain a lot of experience. Uh, I gain a lot of uh, respect to myself. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot about myself now rather than 10 years back. Wow. Did you wish that you started this before 10 years? Uh, or it was the right time? It was the right time. Okay. It was the right time. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, God, uh, we are, we are, living in this life mm. with with God mm -hmm. uh, arranged exactly yeah so everything gets so I'm I'm, I'm really enjoy it uh, I'm, I'm I don't feel sorry for anything so Mr. Abdel Mahsin yeah. every episode my colleague Ima she prepared for us a dish and the good thing is it, that, a, is it uh, a delicious one uh, this is we no, you, so. you're gonna try it and yeah. you're gonna tell us if it's delicious or not okay so she, yeah. yeah okay let's see <laughs> how, how good she is <laughs> Iman, what do you have for us today? Well, you scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Today's dish is a uh, fettuccine, chicken fettuccine. We have the fettuccine pasta. We have already cooked chicken, mushrooms, two kind of cheese, uh, cheddar, and mozzarella. Usually, the original one is with the uh, parmigiano, okay? Right. And then <clears throat> uh, we have onions and garlic, black pepper, and salt with heavy cream and a little bit of the cooked uh, chicken stock. 
Nice. Yeah, that's it. So, Mr. Abdul Mahsan, since we're talking about food, yeah, I know that you experienced a lot of countries with lots of food. Yep. Can you talk about like uh, what's your favorite dish in each country, or like not in each country, in some of the most countries you liked? Okay, if you allow me, I'm going to rephrase your question. Okay. Uh, what what do I eat during this journey? Uh, those journey. Okay. Okay. Uh, to be to be in the safe side, mm -hmm. uh, especially because to avoid things which is halal and haram. Yeah, you are right. So I prefer egg. Uh, so it, it is very so easy. <laughs> yes, can you imagine three times a day egg? So minimum six egg a day. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> some of them with tomatoes, some of them with what, with whatever available. And oh, yeah. yeah, because the the egg, I mean, to avoid any yeah. any health issue, hygienic issue. So just uh, the egg. Without even salads or vegetables? Or... <laughs> it depends. It depends what is available. Uh, I mean, I mean, well, the thing that to, to enjoy the life, mm -hmm. you have to minimize your uh, requirement. Okay. Don't expect. If I want to have luxury and things which you like uh, what you are going to cook today, then I have to stay either home or oh. traveling by airplane and going to a five-star hotel. But I decide to explore and taste the life as it is, mm. the basic things. So that's why I have to reduce my requirement and expectation and just go with the, with the minimum. Okay. So egg and uh, usually, which is available, like a little salt or uh, anything's available. Oh, this mm -hmm. is very interesting. I really see that. So how long do you take for, for a trip? It's normal, normally, it's a normal trip. Uh, well, the sh there's a short trip and there is a long trip. The longest trip, it took for me five months and 10 days. Wow. And where I crossed 45,000 kilometers from Kuwait all the way to the North Pole and to uh, Japan Sea and back to Kuwait. Uh, that, that was the longest trip. And there are some short trip, which it could be like uh, three, four days here in the Gulf. We, we will talk more about your trips, but you have a break. Yep. So dear viewers, we're gonna have a short break and I'm gonna continue your episode of Culture Flavors. So please don't go away. And we're back, dear viewers, talking with our lovely guest today, Mr. Abdul Mahsan Al Baghli, his journey. So, Mr. Abdul Maghli, we're still going to talk about your trips. However, let's see, Iman, how is she doing with her cooking? Well, I already added the water, I'm waiting for it to boil. Mm -hmm. For now, I will saute the, uh, the onions and the garlic with olive oil. And then I'm going to add the mushrooms, and then along with the chicken, mm -hmm. a little bit of chicken stock. Then we'll stir and I'll complete with you. Perfect. So, Mr. Abdel Messin. Yes. I need more details into your trips. So Which one? So give me the longest one. The longest one, yeah. All right. This yeah. is because it's, it's, it took, you just mentioned that before the break, it yeah. took- Five months. Five months. And 10 days. By yourself. Wow. Yes. All right. <laughs> All eggs. <laughs> no, no, not, not the entire, because, I mean, mainly if, if, while crossing non-Muslim or where it's difficult to uh, find okay, halal, okay. so uh, I just stick with the egg and... Uh, so you start from Kuwait? Yes, from Kuwait All right. to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, then United Arab Emirates, mm. then I cross uh, the Gulf from Sharjah to uh, Bandar Abbas in Iran. 
Okay. This is you took it a boat, right? Uh, it was a ferry, not After, a boat. Okay. So uh, me and my motorcycle okay. together. Okay. Because I, I don't like to to separate it from him. Okay. Okay. He's my 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 <laughs> your friend. Co your colleague. <laughs> yeah, my colleague. So we are together. <laughs> okay. And driving all the way uh, north till uh, uh, Armenia, then uh, Georgia, then I enter uh, uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, or the, the south portion of Russia where there are a lot of Muslim community where what calls the Kafkas. Mm. Uh, then I enter Kazakhstan. Okay. It is another Muslim community, a large Muslim community. Mm -hmm. Then uh, from Kazakhstan, I drive up north. I enter Russia again. Then from there, I drive all the way to the North uh, Pole, which is uh, the city of Mormonsk. Mm -hmm. And then back from Mormonsk all the way to, to the far uh, east, which is uh, Vladivostok. The, uh, it is in the Sea of uh, Japan. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot go to Japan because um, my driving license and uh, the number plate are not valid to be drive in Japan for some technical yeah. uh, I was going to ask you, like, whether there were a permit for you to go to take with you for the motorcycle or not? Uh, no, for in that trip, yes, I did. There are some kind of uh, documentation mm -hmm. uh, required, but uh, yeah, for Japan, it's, it's not allowed at all. I mean. Right now, I, if I go to Japan, I cannot even rent a car. Mm. I'm not, I'm, I'm, as a driving license, a Kuwaiti mm. driving license, it's not uh, acceptable there. Maybe because it's different the way how they drive or something. Uh, it has a different issue. Mm. We need some time to explain that. Okay. Then, uh, while coming back, I enter uh, Mongolia. Oh, this is coming back from? From Vladivostok, from the, the point sea of Japan. You... Okay. Then, uh, ah, so you took a different route? From yes, okay. different route. I enter uh, Mongolia. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to see uh, uh, the Genghis Khan monument and uh, exploring uh, Mongolia. Okay. Has, because, the, I mean, Asia, it, it's full of culture, Correct. full of uh, uh, history. The, the history of the entire world starting from Asia. Okay. Then uh, back, uh, back to Kuwait from that. So the, the whole trip took from me five months and 10 days. So what about your clothing? If you want to buy something, where do you put it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the only souvenir I can take. Exactly. The photo. Only photo. photo and video which I capture with my mobile or my camera. That's, that, that's the only thing I can take. Yeah. Other what than about that. your clothes? How do you carry them? <laughs> well, uh, I do have the clothes which I have. Mm -hmm. They are somehow uh, like a universal, mm -hmm. can be used in a hot and in the cold. Okay. So, and I try because I think that while you are, if you are traveling to a one country mm -hmm. or you are going like the same, I mean, you are coming to, the, to, to your work mm -hmm. every day. So you, you tend to change your clothes. Correct. Either changing the clothes or changing the people and the places. Correct. Yes. So I, <laughs> you have to change, change since, I cannot, since I cannot change my clothes a lot, it is all, it's only one custom. <laughs> so I have to change the people and the, the places where I am. Well, actually, because if I travel yeah. only to one country, I take two bags. Yes. And I always say it's not enough. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why, how do you manage? <laughs> I manage by changing the people and the places. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, Iman, I could sell and smell the onion. And the garlic. And the garlic as well. Yeah. So, what are you doing right now? Now I'll be adding the mushrooms mm -hmm. to saute them and to take out their water off. And then I'll add the chicken. Then we will do the, uh, we will add a little bit of cream and then the chicken stock. This is boiling now. Mm -hmm. So I will uh, put it at the end when it's almost finished from here mm -hmm. because we want the pasta to be al dente, okay. which is not very cooked. So when we put it here, it will be like almost cooked here and then we will serve the dish. And this is really good for you, Mr. Abdul Masjid, as well to our dear viewers that Iman gonna take us step by step to the final dish. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mr. Abdel Mehsin, yes. have you traveled during the holy month of Ramadan? 
Uh, yes, usually I don't like to, I like to spend the whole month of Ramadan in Kuwait. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I, I didn't travel in a motorcycle, I, but I travel for business and for some other things. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I experienced Ramadan okay. uh, in a different country, mm -hmm. but since Ramadan, it's link with the uh, Muslim community. Correct. So in order to experience Ramadan, you have to be in, in somehow large Muslim community so you can feel it. You can feel the Muslim community and Ramadan like uh, in the Far East, like in Malaysia, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Thailand, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, India, Turkey. India, Turkey, of course, and uh, uh, the south portion of uh, Russia, where uh, a large Muslim community oh. there. So yes, I experienced the Ramadan there. And how is it different from Ramadan in overseas Kuwait. and in Kuwait? Uh, Ramadan in Kuwait distinguish. It's it's a different. Mm -hmm. It has a different taste, uh, mainly because in Ramadan in in Kuwait link with the social gathering. Correct. Uh, the diwaniya which we have it here in Kuwait doesn't exist in, in any other country. Correct. And even if it does exist, actually, but like you're a foreigner to them, so how would you come into their diwaniyas? Mm, uh, no, I didn't. I, actually, I I been in 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 the cult, in those communities and I uh, tried to be with them. Mm -hmm. The diwaniya concept it's available only in Kuwait. Really? The other uh, community, other country, they do have like a, a friend gathering. It's yeah, not, it's in not the, in different. The, yeah, it's in the coffee shop probably. It's like a coffee shop. It's okay. not, not, not exactly like what, what do we have here in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. And especially in Ramadan here in Kuwait, like um, greeting and uh, blessing, which we have to do it in the beginning of the month. That's exactly. That somehow it doesn't exist clearly in in the other society at the other uh, country, country right. because of it's a different mm -hmm. this is we have it here in kuwait mainly since we are in the holy month of ramadan yeah like uh, can you tell us and the viewers like people in the past how did they prepare for the, the holy month uh, like for their customs and preparations and how they did it and the dishes and the dishes also, yeah. <laughs> of course. They, especially the food. Especially the food. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, I'm sure they don't have pasta and those mushrooms here in of Kuwait. Course. Okay, so you are cooking something out from the Kuwaiti culture. <laughs> uh, well, um, what I experienced in, in Ramadan in the past, that there are a lot of preparation, especially that Ramadan, uh, there are some certain dishes, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Ramadan. Maybe right now those dishes uh, somehow they immigrate to the to the to the table to the Kuwaiti table all around the, the year. Like the tashrib, which is the the meat uh, broth and the bread. Right. The, oh, no, in the past, it was. The tashrib was dedicated for Ramadan. Mm -hmm. The haris, which is the crushed wheat and the meats, right. which is, I mean, although that dish is available in other society, like the Armenian and the Russian culture available, but in Kuwait, haris was dedicated for Ramadan. Right. So the, the Kuwaiti family, they have to prepare and they have to stuff their, whether it's the, the refrigerator, the, the product for preparing the haris, the tashrib, uh, and the gamat. Mm -hmm. Gamat, now, now we can see the gamat uh, <laughs> everywhere. everywhere. Right. Yes. In the best, the gamat, it is a Ramadan thing. Yes. Other than Ramadan, it, it, it's, it's really hard to find it. It is, it's like prohibited. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, what? You want the gamat? No, you have to wait till next Ramadan. <laughs> exactly. Even the it's only one month a year. Yes, and that's it. <laughs> So, Mr. Abdel Bastin, our crew member had a really amazing report about you. But before we go, let's see our colleague Iman. How is she doing? Before I'm good. I added the pasta to the water, and I added now <clears throat> the cheddar cheese, mm -hmm. uh, wanting it to melt. 
So we could add the, uh, the whipped cream and then that's it. We're done. Hope you like it. <laughs> Hopefully. Usually I don't like uh, uh, the pasta. I don't eat, I don't eat no but, pasta, nothing. But still we're going to try it yeah, uh, okay. and, and hopefully you, you will like it. Uh, do I have a, an option? No, there is no option. Oh, no e democracy here. With, with Ima, there is no option. No, either to eat it or to eat it. Exactly. <laughs> so, dear viewers, let's go watch this report and we will be back. So, please stay tuned. And we're back, dear viewers, after the report. Mr. Abdel Mehsan, can you share your experience uh, celebrating the month of Ramadan here in Kuwait and abroad? Okay, um, the difference, mainly the social activity. Mm -hmm. The social activity here in Kuwait are, I, I believe, from my experience from all around the world, I believe the social activity here in Kuwait is the maximum uh, among even in the Gulf region. Now, those social activities, they get more, more and more in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. uh, those things may, uh, we, we don't feel it, uh, especially because I, I spent some time in India mm -hmm. and with, with uh, during the, the, the period of time where I was working and I experienced that also in uh, uh, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the lifestyle, uh, they cannot get gathered uh, uh, the entire month because they are they are engaged with a lot of activities. So, so those the, the taste of Ramadan, really. That's why I I always try to to experience Ramadan every year in Kuwait because. From my experience, when I tried it, in, I tried it in Kazakhstan, I tried it in Russia, in India, and, and in Malaysia. They do have, but they cannot, they, they, they don't have like what we have here in Kuwait. You're right. So, Mr. Abin Mehsan, I believe in, in, in every episode, in every person, yeah. the role of the family is very important. Yes. Especially you go away for a long time. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned that you've been abroad for for five months yeah so the family support is very important so what's your role family role in your hobby well uh, during those longer trip uh, usually between time to time i get i get of course i have a, a daily contact with right. with my family so they know uh then they know every day when i start in the morning and they know when I stop in the afternoon, Good. and I, I, I get a contact with them in, in a daily basis. So, 
so they don't have to worry about me. Very good. So let's see, Iman, how is she doing? Well, it's almost done. Nice. So I'm going to add the pasta along with here, and then to this one, we'll mix, and then you, I can serve. Nice. So Mr. Abdel Mehsin, you've been traveling for almost 10 years, yeah. out of curiosity. Yeah. How many countries have you been visited so far? So far, uh, during the last 10 years, I crossed 40 countries. MashaAllah. Uh, starting, uh, of course, in the, um, the Gulf uh, country, all the Gulf country I crossed them, and then Jordanian, and uh, Europe, uh, 17 countries in Europe, and almost 90% of Asia I crossed. So what is going to be your next trip? Where is it going to be? And when? When? Uh, <laughs> when and where, that is a difficult question. Uh, you have not decided yet. I, 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 yeah, that's why. This is what I, I told you in the beginning. I don't want to waste my resources in, in making too much plan. It just come by itself. Wow. So you just wake up in the morning and say, I would like to visit this country. This country. Let's just go. Turn the motorcycle Let's on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding the food, I know that you said you eat only extra during the, your travel, but like your other travels, do you enjoy any specific dishes you like in other countries? Well, I didn't say only egg. <laughs> I said when, I mean, the safest, especially yeah. if I'm in the road in the countryside, mm -hmm. if there's nothing available, especially the halal food, mm -hmm. I go for egg. But, uh, one of the, I mean, uh, uh, one of the country which I really enjoy it, uh, which is uh, Russia. Mm. Russia being the biggest country in the world. Correct. Russia. For food? No, no. no, as, no as the as biggest. The size. The size. <laughs> the size. The size. <laughs> and uh, Russia, I mean, there are so many unique things, fact about Russia that, you know, that they, they had Russia crossed 11 time zones. Mm. So starting from Moscow all the way to Vladivostok, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you just keep changing your watch because the time zone is different. Correct. And of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, culture mm -hmm. uh, and there are so many dishes, mm -hmm. but there are some certain dishes which is almost common in the entire, mm -hmm. which is suit me. Uh, they do have something, what they call it the blini, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think it is similar to the pancakes, the, the, the thin pancake. Okay. So usually I like those because I know that it's just a wheat uh -huh. and egg. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so usually I, I, I really prefer that uh, dishes, which is very common there. This is very yeah. interesting that you exposed to a lot of countries, exposed to a lot of cultures. So is there any trip that was a little bit risky for you that you will not forget? Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, crossing Siberia, it's, it's, uh, I mean, that piece of land, it's almost empty. Mm. So crossing a long distance and even the fuel station or the villages. It's far away. They have, yeah, they are far away. So uh, it is, it is, a, it has been, a, I mean, experience for me crossing that portion of the air. Mm, this is very interesting. Yeah. We're still going to talk more about your trips. We're going to know more about you, Mr. Adel Nassimus. We have a break. So, dear viewers, we have a short break and we will be back. So, please don't go away.
And we're back, dear viewers, after the break. Now I have already finished the pasta. Uh, I know that I always tell you that uh, we should eat healthy food. Today our dish is made of olive oil, which is already okay, good, but it has gluten in it. Anyways, moderation, and that's it. Uh, this is not for everyday dish. It's like uh, once a week, once a month, and that's it. Hope you enjoy it as much as like hopefully they do. I hope so. Inshallah, <laughs> inshallah. Do you have an option? <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Abdul Mahsin, yes. do you link to cooking? Yeah. Do you know how to cook? Uh, yes, I do. When I mean, I'm not so professional, but I do. I do. I do a lot of cooking. So probably we should have you in another episode, and you probably help Iman cooking or try to. Yeah. Are <laughs> you scared? We should, because we should try. Yeah, <laughs> cooking. What do you cook? Cooking a healthy food. All right, hundred <laughs> percent healthy food. What do you cook? Well. Uh, of course, um, I like to uh, cooking of the, especially the, the seafood, the fishes, okay. fish. Uh, usually when, I mean, if I do have the, the good uh, mood, I go to the fish market, buy uh, fresh fish and uh, you you make it, you make make it, it, you make it yeah, home, whether it's tamarik uh -huh. or uh, the mechboos. Mm -hmm. So it's a traditional Kuwaiti dish. It is a traditional Kuwaiti and of course... Which I always fail. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be for you, Mr. Abdel Mahsin, and thank you, Iman, You're for welcome. preparing this. Now the evaluation Just, time? Yes, so you could try it, but I would like to know Mr. Abdel Mahsin. Yes. You have a really nice hobby that traveling abroad to a lot of countries by motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot of people might do that. I believe you have a lot of advices for them, so please go ahead. Uh, I believe the first and the most important advice, which I, I really, I always invest that. Mm -hmm. uh, the traveler, he is an ambassador for the, his country. Mm -hmm. So always try to be, I always try to be a good ambassador representing uh, Kuwait, Arab, Muslim community. Correct. So this is the most important that I try, I mean, even here in Kuwait, I try not to, I try to know the, the rules mm -hmm. of the country. Correct. I try not to uh, violate any rule. Correct. And the, the, I mean, by, by following the rules, automatically you will be safe. Correct. So I always invest in that point. Okay. Any advices for driving that you have to drive slowly, don't exceed the, the speed limits and all of that? Yes, this is part of the... Providing the rules. Of the, uh, I mean, following the, the rules and the guideline. And whether you are driving a motorcycle or a car or any vehicles, you have to concentrate. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, we see a lot of people uh, distracted with those smartphones. Correct. So, so that's you have, why... You have to be careful. You have to be careful. And even w while I'm in the motorcycle, I never use those headsets. Okay. Because the headset will distract me. Correct. So we would love to thank you for your time as well as for your information that you provide for us as well as I would like to thank you more for playing the di this dish. You're most welcome. I hope you like it. We're going to try it, both of yeah. us? Yeah. <laughs> so dear viewers, we're going to see you in a different episode with different countries. So please, until then, be safe. Bye-bye.